Hey, ladies and gentlemen, what is going on? Welcome back. This is Force, and here today we will be checking out the division yes the time has finally arrived we're all done making assumptions about the game wondering about the game it's here the beta has arrived and we're finally able to give this game a look now i'm starting right at the very beginning of the beta there was a prologue that they've obviously cut from the beta and i didn't show you character creation but that's basically because character creation right now is non-existent uh, you can essentially just randomize uh, some preset tiles and that's it you know, we don't have much uh, agency over what we can do when creating our agent. Ha! Ah, uh, so I didn't. It, it really didn't make any sense to show it to you. I figured we'd just jump right into the game and get things started. So general premise of what's going on here in the division is a bunch of bad guys released uh, terrible stuff that killed a ton of people, and we're trying to take back society. Now there's undertones of potentially that not being the true story, and maybe something more. Uh, insidious has been taking place, but I don't know that we're really going to dive too much into the story aspect today. What I want to do here in this video is just show you gameplay, talk with you about the game. No frills, nothing fancy. This is just going to be gameplay, looking at mechanics, talking about what the division is, the different things that you can do, and what the, the beta has to offer, and what from the beta we could extrapolate about what the final game will have to offer. So, er, I played 14 hours of this today. I'm not exaggerating. 14 hours, an absurd amount. I really wanted to get my hands in and, and understand this before it released, because I wanted to form an opinion. This is one of my most anticipated games of 2016. I needed to form an opinion. I needed to share that with you. And uh, let's just, let's get things going. So first of all, where we started off here, uh, this is uh, what uh, basically comes down. Camp Hudson is basically like Destiny's Tower. It's a spot where you can meet up with other players, you can group with other players, and go about doing your missions with them. Now, I'm not going to group up with anyone. This entire video today is going to be solo. But just know you can meet other agents here and say, hey, do you want to be my friend? You want to group up with me? In fact, if I can go up to a guy and right click on him. So now I can interact with him. I could invite him to my party. We could set up matchmaking. I can do this to any any agents nearby. You can see there's uh, the Y button for matchmaking. You can set, I guess, privacy settings if you want, but I don't, we don't care because we're not doing any of this. Uh, but yes, Camp Hudson, there's also some vendors here which you can buy some gear from. There's a weapon and gear vendor, which I needed actually once I hit the max level of the beta, which is 8 at the moment. Uh, the max level of the final game is going to be 30, but right now it's 8. And they actually start you off at level 4, as you can see. Uh, these vendors will scale to your level with what gear they have to offer. And you can see we have got uh, gear for level 4, and again, our... Our character is level four, um, and we, there's a couple things we got. To, I mean, there's going to be a lot to take a look at, but uh, let's go back to the map here real quick. So you pull out, and it shows this map here, and this is, as we zoom out, this is what the beta has right now. So this is what's currently in the beta, all of this red outline zone, and there is the white portion of this red outline, which is the co-op and PVE elements, and then the red portion, which is the dark zone. Now, if we zoom out a little further. The white outline along this border here is actually the entire map. So when this game launches in a month from now, this is everything that's going to be in the game. As far as we know, as far as we've been told from the developer. So the beta that we have access to right now equates to about, I'd say, maybe like a fifth or a sixth of the total map size that we're going to see in the final release. And it takes up a, like a third of the total dark zone, which is the PvP stuff. So I just want to take you through show you some gameplay, show you some missions, once again, talk about the game, and give you a good idea of what to expect from it. So we're going to go ahead and read this, and all this is going to do is show us some nearby points of interest, different encounters, little side missions that we can do. There's a water supply side mission over here, virus research, another virus research over here, and then way over here, we even have Assault the Stronghold. So a bunch of different things we can do as we leave Cape Hudson. And I'm going to click on one of them to set a waypoint. Because I'd like to do a couple of these side missions before we head on over here to do the main mission. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. We've already interacted with this. This is a player stash. It's nothing right now. 
but eventually I can store stuff in here. And then also, once you get into the dark zone, you extract this contaminated gear, and it makes it into your storage. And then from there, you can take it out of your stash, put it in your inventory, and actually use it. Uh, we'll talk about dark zone and uh, maybe take a sneak peek of it later on. I'm probably going to be vastly underleveled when we walk into it. But honestly, that's fine. Um, I found that... PvP does happen, but it's like, it's always just someone gets the drop on someone else and they tend to die if you're at close range. It's pretty, you know what, the PvP, um, I think, if anything, is going to be what keeps me in this game. So I don't want to start off saying like, oh, this is stupid, because I don't think it's, we're, we're, we're going to talk on it more as we go forward. And also bear in mind, big thing with this uh, video is to show you the gameplay, all the systems and all of that. I'm probably going to do a separate video just with my first impressions. Um... I, I think that would I think that makes a lot of sense. I, I'd like to just focus this on hey, what's the division? What can you show me what the division is? Without all these edits, well, the, the press footage that came out, there were so many edits and so much stuff maybe they couldn't show or whatever. That's not gonna be here. Uh, so when when you select a waypoint, you can put I can put one anywhere I wanted. I could just put a waypoint right here if I felt like it. Uh, but when you select a waypoint anywhere, it's going to show you the nearest uh, direct route on main roads. Sometimes there's side alleys that you can take to get there a little quicker, and that's something that's probably going to come with over time as you uh, learn the map more. You'll know all the shortcuts that you can take and things like that. And you'll notice that I mean this. It's pretty dense looking, it's pretty dense feeling, and there's a lot of stuff going on, but at the same time, in many ways, it's just a lot of corridors with some buildings you can enter. It is definitely not the case that I could walk into any one of these buildings, not even close. I want to say maybe 5% of these buildings have accessible areas, maybe less. A majority of them are essentially walls in a corridor. That's basically what it is. Okay, so we're coming up here to our first encounter now. Got a couple enemies here. And this is just one of the side missions. And again, we found out about this by checking out that job board or that map, whatever the heck it was called, at Camp Hudson. Uh, various establishments will have similar things that will show you nearby points of interest. You don't have to do that, though, as you just wander around the map. If you haven't previously discovered them, you will discover them naturally. Now, before we enter combat, we do have to assign a skill. Uh, so I'm going to go on over here to my abilities. We've got a skill to assign, and we can choose between medical, which gives us a pulse, which is pretty cool. A recon pulse that marks hostiles and allies through walls and cover. Also gives us a nice little buff. Uh, we've got a sticky bomb that we can launch out, and then we have got a ballistic shield, which is a little defensive thing. So I think we're actually going to go with the pulse because it's actually a very nice ability, and we're going to bind that. That's our first of two abilities, and then eventually you unlock a third ability, which I believe is like a special ability. I think that's probably the last one in each one of these. But these are all the potential skills in the game so there's there's various wings of your base of operations which we'll be taking a look at in a little bit and as you level up those wings you unlock new skills modifications for those skills which will make them do different things more in interesting things various like for example my pulse could eventually increase the range and mark loot or it can make it so that hostiles can't mark me which is really good in pvp or it can make it so that we get a damage increase to any hostiles that we get marked. So you can get modifications, but there's only actually a few different skills. Very, very few. There's four in each wing, that's it. But with the modifications, plus talents, plus perks, it seems as if there's going to be a decent amount of customization. But when it comes to skills, there's only really a few to choose from. And unfortunately, I can't even show you what they are because it just says it's not available in the beta for everything but these four right here. These are the only four that we have access to right now. Okay, so primary and secondary weapon as well as a sidearm is what you have to cycle through. Um, and I don't know why I haven't said this yet, but we are playing on the Xbox One because that's the only beta uh, that was available today. Tomorrow, I'm going to be hopping into the PC version, expect maybe some comparison videos, and expect uh, uh, m most of my future gameplay to be coming from that version as well. Now, I gotta be honest with you, the very first time I came up uh, with this encounter, it I was I didn't just mow through it like this. I'm gonna say that because I'm a lot more comfortable with the combat and the way the AI is, how they react, and everything, I'm much more 
aware of how to engage, when to take cover, and stuff like that. At first, I sat behind cover, and it took me forever. Uh, that, that green thing on the ground, that green beam, you're going to see that a lot. That is when loot drops on the ground, it displays to you where it is. So if there's a green loot, blue loot, purple loot, yellow loot, whatever drops off in an enemy you kill, you run up to them and you pick it up off the ground. Now, it's worth noting that loot like that in this game is instance to the player. So if I, say before I left Camp Hudson, if I picked up a couple other people in my group, we can have squads of up to four. If I picked up three other people and we all came out, we killed that guy and a green thing dropped, we wouldn't be rushing to it to try to pick it up before our other teammates. We would all be able to pick up a green item off of that. Now, I don't know whether or not it would be the same item for everybody, but I do know, once again, that the loot is instanced to the player. So you don't have to compete with other people when it comes to loot until you get into the dark zone. And even when you're in the dark zone, the, the way it functions is the same that I mentioned, but what will happen is that if someone then kills you after you've picked up your instance loot, they could take that off of your body in the dark zone. And you, know, you might ask, why would you do that? Well, the dark zone has got uh, some... Going to the dark zone is good because you can get some good gear off of the NPCs from there, but also because there are vendors that uh, you get currency for from doing stuff in the dark zone that have some awesome gear. Uh, the main character that I played all day today ended up getting some of the one of the best weapons in the game, which was this yellow assault rifle, and uh, it's level eight, which is the highest level right now, and it's just it's it, it's insane. But it required me to be in the dark zone for a very long time. Uh, so here's a civilian in need. Sometimes you'll come across uh, one of these randomly as you're walking from objective to objective. You'll just see one, and they'll want something. So this one wants a med kit. Sometimes they'll want a soda or some 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 snacks or something. Or sometimes you know they'll want different things. You you decide if you want to give it to them, and you get something in re in reward. One is you get XP. Two is you tend to get an item or something along those lines. So we got a cool jacket, uh, and this is like the sort of dress up Barbie playhouse aspect of this game and we've picked up a couple things so I guess we should take a look at some of the things that we've got so we're gonna go ahead and uh, open up our inventory here so we picked up some armor and uh, this is gonna this is a huge upgrade to what we have so we'll absolutely equip it and I guess there's a few stats and stuff we should talk about the different gear in this game between um, these pieces here and these pieces here they all will increase your stats in either firearms, stamina, or electronics. And as you can see above each of those words, that will increase your primary weapon DPS, your health, or your skill power, respectively. More skill power means your skills are better. They heal for more. They've got an increased blast radius. Uh, they deal more damage, whatever. Skill power equals greater skills. Health equals health, of course. And DPS equals more damage with your weapons. Um, so, yeah, the various gear that we find is going to increase these attributes. You can see we get 14 stamina with this. If I take it off... Uh, dude, I actually can't take it off, can I? I can't just not have one. But let oh, okay, let's so let's let's go to the one that we just uh, swapped with. So if I put if I take this off, you'll see my primary GPS drop down to seventeen sixty. If I put it back on, it goes up to nineteen oh eight. So these stats really uh, significantly affect your character. They significantly enhance your character. We also happen to get a modification, uh, which is an ACOG scope, which we could put on one of our weapons. So let's go to our weapons here. We grab this uh, primary weapon our M4, and let's go ahead and click X to modify it and see if we can put the ACOG on this one. So we're going to go up here, and yes, we can. The ACOG scope can be placed on this. It's going to increase uh, four times scope, and it's going to increase a 2.5% to the optimal range to that weapon. So that means the bullet drop-off is the, the range for it is increased by 2.5% as it states there. Uh, before you've got to worry about a damage drop off at, at long distance, which will happen with weapons. And you can see a bunch of modification for the different type of weapons. We got the scope, the magazine, the underbarrel, the muzzle, and different weapon types will have different attachments that they can and can't use and, and things of that nature. But at, at the moment, since we're very early on, we don't have many attachments to do. I guess we could go through some of this menu stuff right now. We've got a character, which gives just a bunch of character information that you can cycle through, all your stats combined, things like that. Pouches, this is like your crafting inventory and stuff. Crafting isn't in the beta though, so I can't really show anything. I can't, there's no crafting in the beta, so I can't really talk with you or show anything about it. But there, I know that there are 
crafting materials you gather in the environments and they can have different rarities and those rarities will determine what the end result of what you craft is so we're going to be crafting stuff and we get better stuff with better crafting materials and then there's also appearance which this is uh we just picked up uh a jacket or something oh you know what oh my goodness this is account wide so Normally, you do not have access to this much stuff, but uh, because it's account wide, this is some of the many uh, appearance items I was able to acquire throughout the course of today's 14 hours. So, uh, as you can see, uh, these are just stuff that will drop in the world when you ki kill enemies, when you loot crates, and there's all sorts of different options. Uh, different jackets, different beanies, and this is just for the outward visual appearance. This is, again, as I mentioned, kind of the Barbie playhouse. Now, I can choose not to have anything and just show my armor, but why just show my armor when I can get a trendy down jacket? <laughs> or why why choose to just wear regular jeans when I can... I'll just cycle through a few of them just so you guys can look. Uh, so, yeah, all sorts of options. We're going to be as trendy as we can, though. We're going to grab some trendy jeans. We can wear a, a, that's just a scarf. Might as well card, call it a scarf. We can wear cardigans. We can wear a trendy hoodie. All sorts of different shoes that we've got access to. What kind of shoes do we want to wear? Hmm? Bold terrain shoes. That'll be good. We've got trendy outfits and shoes that get the job done. So yes, you'll you'll find all of this cosmetic gear that you can put on your character. Uh, and and you just, I don't know you put it on your character and you can look trendy or dope as fuck whatever you feel like I don't, it doesn't really make a difference okay so let's go ahead and uh, head back out so we did that little side mission let's go do another side mission we're gonna click on this encounter a path will be lit up for us and on the way to that path what's gonna happen well not a whole lot to be quite honest with you one of my biggest um, kind of complaints about the game is that very thing that the world can feel very dead, I guess, in between doing stuff. She wants a med kit. I don't want to give it to her, though. I only have one med kit. I don't want to drop. I don't want to get rid of it. Now, this might be a situation just because the beta is just the, the starting zone from Camp Hudson up to here. So maybe as we explore the world in the final release in these vicinities, maybe it's like a lot more jam-packed and there's terrible enemies everywhere constantly attacking you but as the beta was this afternoon most of the time when i'm walking from point a to point b there's nothing on rare occasion like every so often down a corridor i'll come across one of these groups and i'm gonna guess four enemies maybe see if there's four enemies there there's one here's two there's that's not is that it Okay, I overestimated the number of enemies. Looks like there was only two. I, I, you know what? I could have done two. I could have just pulsed and we wouldn't have had to guess. And then look, way over there, there are two other enemies. And I don't think they're going to show up on my map here, but I'm pretty sure they're around the block right like right around there. But I'm not, gonna go, I'm not going over there because we want to go over here. So as it is in the beta right now, as I mentioned, this could completely change... Once we get out into the big open world, there could be enemies everywhere. You could constantly feel like there's a big threat, like there's a lot going on. But right now, nope, not even close. It's just basically it's just walking down these corridors from point A to point B. And, you know, I might run into one or two enemies, but that's it. Uh, there's, so there's a little bit of extra side stuff. You know how I mentioned, like, you can't go into most buildings? Sometimes you'll come across one of these, and, you know, the map is static, so eventually you'll know where all these locations are, and you'll have some verticality. And, um, you know, there will at times be chests and things up here to get uh, crafting materials. Maybe you get yourself a nice little item. Maybe you find a med kit. Maybe. Not always, but maybe. Sometimes. And this one, I don't... Actually, yes, there is an enemy right there. So we should turn around so we can shoot him. I almost feel like I'm not doing this... <laughs> I almost feel like I'm not doing the combat justice right now because I'm so used to how the enemy AI responds and how to shoot them and how to use the staggering that this is stupidly simple compared to when I first played. When I first played, I was taking cover. I was taking damage. A lot of shots were getting off. But after I've put a significant amount of time, I've sort of... I don't know. I've sort of like figured out the cadence, I guess, of the AI and how it plays so that it's like it's not a challenge anymore. And I know like when when I stagger them, I know how long it's going to be until they're able to respond and all that stuff. So 
it's just one of those things. I just feel like I've gotten to the point where the combat, especially this early on, is a lot easier for me than, than it would probably be for you when you start out. Now, I'm pretty positive that I can't loot this. It looks like I'd have to find my way up and around. So there's a little bit of scaling, which could get me to loot that. And, you know, maybe there's a weapon in there. But frankly, by the time, like, it doesn't matter because I'm probably going to replace it very soon anyways. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be all too concerned about it. But I mean this is nice. This is nice little fun. You know, there's some verticality to this uh, game. But please bear in mind, this doesn't mean because you saw me climb on this roof that you can climb on every single roof that you see. No. Just a, a percentage of the roofs. I'm sure the developer themselves knows that exact percentage. I can't tell you that exact percentage, but a percentage of the roofs you'll be able to go onto and you'll find these neat little alleys. Now, I think this verticality, in conjunction with the fact that there is also um, some subterranean levels, does help to add to the total size of the map. But I'm not going to lie and, and not mention that I, I really feel as if it might be really tiny. I really feel as if at the end of the first week of playing, I might be like, oh, well, that was fun playing The Division. I've been everywhere. There's really not much for me to do. I've seen everything. Now it's just time to grind some gear. I'm concerned that it's going to get to the point. We don't need to extrapolate too much, though. First impressions, thoughts on the beta will be coming. I want to give it some more time. I want to play the PC version of the game. I also want time to wrap my head around the game. Because, you know, I again, I played for 14 hours today. My brain is fried. I'm surprised I'm even capable of making this video. I hope it comes off at least somewhat decent and not just some incoherent mess essentially okay so let's go ahead and do one of our side missions now something of note too that i didn't bring up earlier was that the different side missions give different uh rewards for the different wings in your base of operations so we're going to be un unlocking our base of operations very soon but basically sometimes you'll see these green ones which are for medical sometimes you'll see blue side objectives which are for security and sometimes you will see I think it's yellow. Uh, I had it on the tip of my tongue. Maybe this uh, being awake for too long that just fried my brain. Medical, uh, you know what? I could check right here. Here we I, I, I do it right here. Piece of cake. <laughs> Medical, tech, and security. So there you go. So so there'll be these, all these different side quests. You'll be doing different things, killing an enemy, trying to rescue a hostage, whatever, to secure data. But the uh, w what you end up getting from those... A big part of it are these research points that you can use to upgrade your base of operations, which we'll be taking a look at once more momentarily. Okay, so we've got a, uh, a quest coming up here. And before we get there, though, let's do this. Hop on over here. And as I do this, like, I'm looking at this and I'm, I'm thinking, like, this is actually pretty cool. Like, I've got these little corridors. There's dogs barking. I'm able to hop over this fence. We just, you know, we just came off of scaling a roof. There's going to be a lot to enjoy about this game. I suppose the concern is that longevity after the first week of, let's be honest, I'm going to obsessively play for a week. That is what's going to happen. I will obsessively play for a week, and after that first week, is there going to be enough to do? Am I going to want to stick around? I, I, I don't know. Again, it's way too early for me to tell. We're going to put this on. It gets extra armor. Uh, we do end up... Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Are those the bad guys? Yeah, they just walked by me. <laughs> I was just minding my own business, chilling out here. Don't worry about me, bad guys. Everything's good. I need to make sure I take cover, though, because uh, they will light me up pretty quickly if I don't. Take out the easy guy first. I mean, I, I honestly hope I get lit up, because I do feel like I'm making this combat look a lot easier than I remember it being when I first, I, I, I mean, I don't, it's not even a memory thing. You can go back and watch the stream. I get my ass kicked quite often. Like it happened, it, you know what I mean? Like it happened, well, you don't know what I mean unless you were there. So, you know, you could go there and check it out. Ooh, nice. Okay, let's just get, I think we just got a new weapon. I just feel like I'm making this combat look much easier than I recall it being. So we got a shotgun. Uh, you notice the uh, the single shot damage is very high compared to these, but obviously the rate of fire is much lower. But I think that's a perfect secondary weapon. Oh, it's level five. Oh my goodness. Okay. Well, we can't we can't grab it yet, but we'll be grab it soon as soon as we hit level five. Soon as we hit level five. All right. So we got to research uh, the virus, which is down this way. We're gonna hit another pulse in a second. I want to check. We probably have got enemies somewhere near. 
couple of uh, stuff here. Oh, you know what? Actually, before we get the enemies, here we go. So here's another example of a house we can go into. Here's also an example of a bunch of bullshit. One of the things that very frustrates me about this game is that the movement at times can feel very clunky, especially when it comes to going onto, into, around, over objects. Uh, so especially, I don't know if this is going to change on the PC, but there's a couple things to note. Dodge roll is the same button as snap behind cover. So there are lots of instances where I will try to be dodge rolling fire, but I'll accidentally like, I'll be trying to say, I'm trying to dodge roll, like someone's shooting at me, I'm trying to dodge roll, but I accidentally like snap into cover somewhere. It just, it can be super finicky. And then also we've got instances like what you saw over here, where clearly I should just be able to drop down or at least dodge roll off this thing, but no, I cannot. And like sometimes you can't even dodge roll off ledges you can you can drop off of. So stuff like that, it, sometimes it makes the combat feel a little a wonky. And then also, uh, oh, wow, I was just hitting, okay. Uh, and then also, uh, with that snappiness that I talked about, with this accidentally snapping into cover or, or not dodge rolling when you want to, uh, sometimes it just makes the it just makes the movement feel a little sluggish at times. I feel I really do. Okay, so we just used a lockpick to get ourselves into a, a, a loot cache is like basically what it is. So let me lots of stuff in here: water and food, survival guides. These are just collectibles. You'll get XP, and then you can you know you can look look and check out the survival guide and read about how to live in the wilderness or whatever. It doesn't really matter. It's not actually important. It's good for the RP stuff for those of you who care about it. So we're picking up all sorts of stuff. Energy bars, water bottles. Well, what's all this for? Is there a survival mechanic? Do you get thirsty? Do you get hungry? No. And no. Those are all just buffs. So notice right here, energy bar, remove static status effects, water, 20% uh, damage to elite enemies. We've got uh, incendiary bullets, which does a uh, chance to light target on fire. So these are buffs. That's all it is. Buffs and the removal of debuffs and things like that. We also have grenades, a variety of grenades. We've got some fragment right now. Um, what else do we have? We can uh, we can do emotes. I'm sure any division video you've seen, all the idiots have done this. I guess this is like there must have been. Some <laughs> I don't mean to call them idiots, but there must have been some like agreement amongst everyone who went to the freaking press event for this game that they would all start out their videos doing freaking jumping jacks because that's I, I every video from everyone who went to the ubisoft press event every video did that i don't even it's dumb okay whatever but there's a bunch of emotes that you can do um there's also local voice uh, voice especially in the dark zone where there's pvp that can be very cool um but this is like another uh, just like i like the emotes especially in these tense pvp situations which happen in the dark zone but on the PC, there's going to be text chat. There's also voice chat. So it's a little redundant, but I think it adds some extra care. I, I mean, I'm fine with them adding emotes. I'm not going to complain about emotes. Be like, oh, I hate emotes. No, no, no. Emotes are fine. I'm mostly just laughing at how stupid I think it is that everyone opened their video with jumping jacks. That's all. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. Let's keep going and uh, do what our objective is for this side mission, which is virus research. Morning. Contaminated supplies detected. Contaminated supplies. Morning. And another aspect of this game is some zones, uh, some areas of the map. We don't see a ton of them here, but there's a lot in the dark zone. Uh, they'll be contaminated. And in order for you to get in there without dying, basically, it will require a gas mask of that level. So so to, in, to get to contamination zone level one, to go through it safely, you need a gas mask level one, etc., etc. And if you try to go into level two as level one, you're, I was told you just basically die. I didn't get to an actual, like, see it very well, but I was told you basically just die. All right, now I am just going to... So there's a few things we can loot in this building, but I'm, I don't want to spend too, too much time doing it. I'm just going to complete this side objective. I'm going to find those containers. Here's the second one. Looks like they're in static positions. Because this is where I remember them being last time. And then I don't know if there was another floor. Yes, there was. I think the last one is on this floor here. And maybe it was in the corner. Is there one more floor? Yes, there is. It's probably up one floor then. It's either in here, it's up one floor. But there's a, there's a bunch of side rooms. Um, I've skipped a few of them, but there's a bunch of side rooms in this building that are lootable. 
And once more, I, I want to reiterate, I know, like, you're going to look at this and be like, Force, like, this is a lot of stuff. Like, there's a ton, you're going in all these buildings, doing all these things. And I'm not saying that's not true. In in many ways it is, and I think especially on first appearance, it seems like there's a ton. But after those 16 hours, I really started to feel like it's, as I mentioned earlier, that it is mostly corridors. But I, I don't know. I don't want to take anything away from the game. There's obviously stuff here besides just corridors. It's not that you can't go into any buildings. So just let, let's just keep playing, right? <laughs> let's just keep playing. Let's keep showing you some gameplay. And trucking along, as we will. This is probably going to be a long-ass video, but I, I, I hope that people enjoy it for what it is. I think that, like, this is something that I would want to see if I was interested in a game. So to just show you a bunch of gameplay footage and just talk about it, share my thoughts as we go through it. I don't know. Is anyone going to watch this shit? Who knows? I don't know. <laughs> Alright, so there's another guy here. I want to I wanna hit level 5 so bad so I can use my... um. I can use that shotgun, man. That close range, like, max damage sounds amazing. All right. So we're like, uh, eh, we're about a third of the way to level five right now. Let's send the data. Contamination scan completed. Data uploaded to JTF servers. Get a little bit of credits there, some medical wing supplies. So as I mentioned, you complete these side missions and you will get rewards based on the side mission type. Those rewards, those supplies are used to upgrade the wings in the base of operation and as you upgrade those wings oh yes blue items thank you <laughs> too bad it's a sidearm huh um and as you upgrade those wings you get those more skills you get those mods you get those talents you get those perks okay so we just picked up some gear that i was very excited about if you couldn't tell get this here and what was the other thing that we picked up this was a, uh, a blue ACOG site, so we're probably going to stick that bad boy on this. Because we just have the, uh, we've got that site, but we can get a blue ACOG, man. And that's going to up the DPS too from the percentage accuracy increase. We get an increase to our total DPS there. Okay, and I, I think that was basically it. I don't think we, do we have any other mods that I can apply here? Oh, you know what? We do have an underbarrel. We picked up an underbarrel at some point. Here we go. So this is going to add 3% hip fire accuracy. Which adds a little more DPS as well. So there you go. Nice. That weapon is getting a little kitted out. It's getting kitted out. Now, did we pick up anything else? No, no, nothing else. Uh, so, the, yeah, this is for your attachments down here. I don't know if we went through all the inventory stuff. Uh, this is for, I don't even know. I actually don't remember having anything in this uh, portion. And this right here is when you're in the dark zone, you pick up those contaminated items. You can carry six of them at any given time before you have to extract them. And that's where that goes. We took a look at all that stuff. We took a look at pouches. Uh, this is like, in, this is Intel. This is just RP stuff. No, Nobody cares. RP, whatever. Group management. I'm sure you can figure out what that is. Map, news, nobody cares. Inventory, and then abilities. Okay, so we basically took a look at everything. There's two things that aren't available in the beta, so I don't know what those are. And then there's just the gameplay settings. Really not much to see here on the console version. From what I understand on the PC version, there's going to be a ton of uh, visual options and things that you can take a look at. And would you look at that? In the time it took for us to open the inventory, bruise a couple things, a snowstorm came in. I think I've been harping a little bit on some of the negative aspects in this game and not focusing too much on the positives. And I think there's some really, really cool things and really fun things that they do. One thing that I love is the day-night cycles, the weather effects. It's awesome, man. It really helps to add immersion to this game. No questions asked. Someone's shooting me. Someone is done shooting me. <laughs> um, this 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 world definitely can feel pretty immersive. There's just a lot going on all the time. Absolutely. Again, I do not want to take that away from this game at all. Okay, so we are going to make it to one more encounter, and then we're going to go do the main story mission. And check out the base of operations. That's what I would like to do with you guys. So let's uh, let's run around the corner here. No, there's a bunch of stuff to loot all over. We could loot ever. We could loot all these things. We could check. Um, there's stuff around us. You know, I could ping. See if there's anybody. Okay, we got some enemies around the corner. There we go. Let's see if what we can take. Let's see if we can take them out here. Piece of cake, right? Piece of cake. Do I, is this my? Yeah, this is it. There, we're gonna use our scope. So if you attach a scope, 
If you have a weapon with a scope attached, like the one that we attached, um, you are then able to zoom in to uh, an ADS mode, essentially, and aim down sights. And that's what we're able to do there. So normally, I just got this zoom, push in the uh, thumbstick, it'll be something on the, probably right click, obviously, on the mouse. And then if you've got a scope, you can ADS. If you don't have a scope, you cannot ADS. So this right here, nothing. I'm, I'm hitting it, nothing's happening. Pistol, nothing. But yes, if I if I uh, put on my weapon with the ACOG, push it, there you go. Okay. Uh, so they, uh, you can see the UI. I don't think I'd have to explain too much of it to you. Uh, we've got the map in the upper left. Upper right is our skill. There's also some watermark overlay for the beta stuff for whatever the hell reason. Make sure, I don't know, maybe if they don't like what I'm saying, they're going to punish me or something. Uh, and then we've got the floating information right next to our name, which I really like. It looks clean. Um, it's relatively easy to pick up in the midst of combat. Uh, oh, shit. Um, the one thing that I will say is sometimes the clutter between your skills and your medkits and grenades, at times, like, when things are popping off, it's been hard to focus on the thing that I want to focus on. That could just be me being an idiot. But I would that would be a criticism from my play experience of the UI there. Uh, but something I do want to explain about the UI is you notice the health bar. We only have two bars right now. So your health, no matter how much health you have, from what I've seen in the beta, I've gone up to triple times the health that we have at the moment. But no matter how much health I had at any point, it's never been more than three bars. And essentially, you will lose health. And if you drop below a bar, you cannot regen back up to that bar that you lost. So if I drop down to one bar, I will not regenerate back up to a second bar. But if I just take a little bit of damage, and my second bar doesn't drop down to one bar, I will regen back to the top of that second bar. I'm, pr that must make, I'm sure that makes sense. There have been games that have done systems like that before. Now what I can do is I can pop a med kit or use a healing skill. I don't have it at the moment, but I will in the future. And that brings me back up to full. In fact, there are some abilities. I've had gear... That makes it so that when I kill someone, it heals me on their death. And this is that even allows you, if I'm at a full two bar and I trigger that effect, that brings me back up to the third bar, which will then let me regenerate all the way to the top of the third bar. So that's how the health uh, system works in this game. Oh, there's also melee. And that's going to stagger anybody that you hit with it. So there you go. Melee staggered. Congratulations. All right, so we got a hostile. So this is an encounter. We've got to defend the uh, JTF officers. JTF stands for Justice Truth Fighters. That's uh, not the case, but. So I'm actually going to do this like the game was kind of meant to be played. And how most of you will probably play it when you first pick it up. You know, as I talked about earlier, because I've gotten used to the way the AI is. And, and frankly, it's kind of stupid. AI isn't the most brilliant. But because I've gotten used to the way the AI is. It, I, I like I'm I'm walking in front of them without getting into cover and just freaking taking full advantage of the uh, auto target lock on that you get in wonderful console shooters. Okay, so we did that. Beautiful. We finished that encounter. So the next thing we can do is head on up here to a main mission. We know that the base of operations is under siege from whatever criminals have taken over Madison Square Garden. We don't have numbers and they don't seem to have a leader, but the JTF is stretched thin. This has to be our first priority, Agent. Get our base back and we'll go from there. Okay, get your base back. Oh, and I didn't mention this before. Take a look at the weapon here. And you notice those two little icons next to the gun, but there's none on here. Uh, as you get higher rarity items, they tend to have these special effects attached to them. And in those special effects, you get these talents. So notice we've got two talents, Expert and Sustained. So Expert means this weapon deals 100% more damage when a target is below 30% health. So a nice little like Executioner ability. Sustained, killing a target increases your health by 2%. So this is an effect similar to what I was just talking about. So if I was at two bars, all right, and I kill someone, if I would maxed out two bars and I kill someone with this pistol, it will regenerate 2%, bumping me up to three, letting my health regenerate back up to the top. Now, there are requirements for many of these effects, like it shows I've got a requirement of 28 in firearms and 49 in stamina. And if you meet those requirements, then the effect takes place. If you don't meet those stat requirements, the effect does not take place. Probably doesn't matter so much as you leveling up, but once you get like, like to the cap, whatever it is, when the cap was 8 for me, you have to make decisions. And you'll get weapons that have a 
a balance of your stats that you can't meet until you swap out gear, and that might make other stats uh, uh, on other stuff not not work, and you not get their effects. So I assume that's going to be the case at Endgame as well. You have to pick what weapons you want to use, and then choose your stat distribution to trigger those special effects um, accordingly, essentially. All right, so we're going to try to clear out outside of the base of operations. Here we go. Alert. Patching into local GTR radio channels. Bunch of enemies over there. And this is where, this is actually going to require us to take cover. And like, like we haven't really had to before. Uh, we do have some friends helping us too, though. Some AI dudes. Right, watch out, someone will throw a grenade. Ah! And it does an AOE block. All grenades do that similar brass radius, whether it's a flash grenade or a, a, a frag grenade and um, Molotov, whatever. Um, it'll have that little AOE ring that you can dive out of before it before it gets to you. I've ne I haven't seen anything along the lines of like cooking frag grenades. I'm not sure if that's a thing. I don't believe so, but I could be wrong, of course. In fact, I've got a grenade right now. Let's go ahead and send out our pulse. Uh, I want to send out my pulse and mark enemies so that we can get a clear uh, view of them. And then we're going to go ahead and switch to grenade. And we get to target it wherever we want and toss it. And then shoot him so he stays in place. There you go. Look at that. So that was a yellow health guy. Yellow health guys are considered harder than normal guys because they've got armor that you have to work through first. So if I was just shooting him straight up like this, it would have taken a little while longer to kill him. Um, but because I had my, uh, because I, I tossed that nade on him, which, he, which I got him to stick in, um, he died very quickly, as you saw. So kill that guy. And I don't know if we just actually triggered the effect. Did I push myself up over above the three bars there? I don't know if I did. I, I'd love for that. I'd love to actually physically show you that thing that I was talking about. I'm, I'm gonna try. Let me try to find. There's there's somebody left still. I want to find him and actually show this to you, if I can. If it turns out to be too much of a hassle, then screw it. It's not that big of a deal. But all right, let's pulse out. Where I hear somebody somewhere. Okay, there we go. So if I kill him. Without him dealing damage to me, and I push above that third bar, I will be able to regenerate that third bar. So I'm going to try to make sure I don't take any damage above all else. Okay, so let's see. I think I... There we go. Look at that. Look at that. So my, my health now is regenerating into the third bar because I, I pushed it above it with that effect from the pistol. So there you go. Alright, so now here we go in the base of operations. This is going to be a pretty big thing in the game. This is where you unlock basically all of your character progression. So let's go ahead and move in. Uh, I don't remember if there was a cutscene in here or not. There might be, but... So we're, we're coming on in. This is the base of operations, and we basically need to unlock it. The, the, the three different sectors, as we mentioned. Security, technology, here we go. Agent, we need our base up and running, and we need to show the people of New York they're getting their city back. Our base of operations has potential, but right now it's a piece of shit and we've got no one to staff it. To get this place where it needs to be, we need people who know what they're doing. Like doctors. There's a virologist running a field hospital over at Madison Square Garden, but the whole area has gone to shit. With her, we can get our medical facilities online. Without her... The JTF commander Benitez is out in the field and he's gone offline. Bring him back. We need him to set up a functional security wing and it'll do a hell of a lot for morale. We've also got to restore basic services. We need power and the intel the grid can give us. They had a guy working on that, but it sounds like he ran into trouble patching us in. Without him, it's lights out. Isaac can map itself to each of the wings in the base and sync their progress so we can have a bigger picture of what's happening here. And the more stable this base is, the better shape the city will be in. The security wing needs some love and Captain Benitez. The JTF loved the guy. He can mobilize them and help us get the intel and firepower we need to get all these hostels off the streets. The medical wing is a wreck right now. Once we get that virologist over here, we can build up a staff, investigate the origin of the virus, and start getting more supplies. For civilians, but for us as well. And as you've heard, we're unlocking these different wings, and they basically telling us like how we can unlock them and, and who we need to rescue to get in our team. And what's going to happen is right now it's kind of a disaster. I mean, look at this place. There's junk everywhere, rubbish, blah. Well, well as we uh, upgrade, it's going to get cleaned up. We're gonna, the NPCs that we rescue will start to inhabit this space. 
And again, this is where all of our, this is where our progression takes place. This is where we do all of that stuff. Hey, bad news. I'm not going to be able to get out there. Not with my goddamn leg like this. I'll do what I can from here, but it's not the same. You have no idea how much I wanted to be in the field. I trained for a scenario like this my entire life, but it's worse than anything we could have imagined. You know how they won't let you get too close to anyone, so it won't mess you up when you're finally activated? Well, I did that, and it didn't fucking work. I'm attached. These are my people. This is my city. We're taking it back. Oh. Look, you need to... Yeah, okay. Okay. They're counting on us. Let's not let them down. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to say that I'm, like, terribly impressed with the cutscenes or anything. All right, so this uh, spot has a bunch of vendors, just like the vendors we saw at the very beginning of the game. There's a weapon vendor, a gear vendor. There's also a vendor for mods. Uh, as you interact with them, they will show you gear based on your current level. So the higher level you are, the higher gear that's going to show up. Each one of the wings that we just went to activate, uh, you will go there once you've rescued people. You will spend uh, your research points in those spots. From, from the different uh, side missions that you've done, you upgrade them, that unlocks the stats, the mods, the talents, the perks, all of that. We've also got a stash right here, just like the stash we took a look at at the beginning. Okay, so, I currently have a quest to go out. Oh, ooh, actually, you know what? We are level 5, so that means a couple things. Number one, we can use our shotgun, which we are going to use as our secondary weapon. Um, we probably keep the M14 as our primary weapon, I think. It looks like that's pretty good. We've got a shotgun. We've got two shotguns, actually. That's a level 4 one, though. Uh, we've got, uh, let's see, it's an assault rifle that we're using. There's also a submachine gun. So there's shotguns, um, assault rifles, submachine guns, LMGs, and then what essentially amount to sniper rifles. I, don't, I forget what they're called. It might be like tactical rifle or something like that. But, yeah, they've got their own fancy name or whatever we also have a vertical grip let's see if we get some stuff here uh, i might be able to put the vertical grip on this bad boy yeah sure let's put the vertical grip on this i don't it doesn't matter that's fine and that's that's basically it right now we got that uh, i don't know we probably i i probably just want to get rid of some of the stuff that we're not using so basically you can go through and the stuff that you don't want that you're not planning on using you can mark as junk and this allows for quick sale quick sale once you get to the vendors so get rid of this get rid of this that's fine that's fine right there um get rid of this sidearm and do i want to get rid of any more of these no we'll hold on to the mp5 i don't plan to use it but we'll hold on to the mp5 anyways there's also an option to deconstruct things for crafting materials but since crafting is not in the beta i don't care to do that so i'm just gonna sell it all so we're gonna sell all of our junk boom and give us plenty of free space uh in our inventory so that uh, as we go out uh, we'll have free space. <laughs> All right. So we've unlocked the base of operations, gave you a basic rundown. We've taken a look at a bunch of gameplay. Mm, there's a couple of more things. You know, we showed you the side missions. There's a variety of them, as we talked about. Um, we've got a big quest right here. And then eventually there is the dark zone. I'm pretty sure I need to do this before I could even potentially go into the dark zone, though. So we're going to go ahead and do this. The JTF and Sarah were using the site as a field hospital, but armed hostiles swarmed in. Now they've got the med staff as hostages. We need them, especially Jessica Candle, the virologist who is running the place. Find her, send her to the base, and clean up what's left. Now, because this I'm low level, we're just starting, we're just going to do this mission like normal, but I want you to know that main missions like this have different options to uh, play them multiple times. You can basically run a difficult version of the dungeon, which will increase the rewards that you get from it. So you can do normal dungeon or difficult dungeon. Now, we are just going to run it in normal. I just want to get through it. I just want to show it to you. Plus, I'm not even sure my current level if I could solo it on difficult. I don't know. I, I, I Maybe I could. But all that would really do... All it does is it makes the enemies bullet sponges. I, I hate... We're bringing up that term. There it is. It makes the enemies bullet sponges. It gives them armor, which subsequently just means like a ton more health. Um, and... You know, I could show you them with a ton more health. All it's going to do is mean 
it's gonna take longer to kill them and that's the, that, that doesn't really serve the purpose of this particular video maybe in a future video just you you know that as much you know whether or not that's a good thing or a bad thing for you what I will say um, from I ran it a bunch of times on hard mode I did solo it a bunch of times during the stream today on hard mode it definitely makes it more challenging as you would assume it's called hard mode uh, but you have to really focus hard on your cover you've got to really pay attention and watch your flanks like all that stuff becomes pretty important uh, now the mission that we're doing right now is to unlock further developments of the medical wing which is going to let us unlock a new skill in the medical wing as well uh, and that's the purpose of this and i would assume of course that this is how it will work similarly for the other stuff for the other wings the tech the tech wing security wing as well okay, so we hit a checkpoint here gotta rescue the doctor all right and you probably saw this gameplay from other people during that press event um but most of those people also did that in a group and it is my understanding that when you play in the groups enemies do scale up so this i guess it's good for those of you who are interested in maybe playing this game solo or maybe just even the story content solo for you to get an idea of what it would be like and this is you know when you play in group it scales up when you play in hard mode it scales up more when you play solo things have less health because it's 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 scaled to you and i i thought i heard as well I think that m you get more enemies beyond the enemies um, being harder ha and taking more hits. There's more enemies the, the uh, further up you go. But as you can see on normal mode, solo, it's pretty easy. In fact, I suppose if we take a moment to recollect on this entire uh, video so far, all the enemy it's been it's been it's been straight up pretty easy, like nonstop. Okay, so that that guy he had more health than the normal guy. But I also had a shotgun in his face, so he, he, he went down pretty quick too. <laughs> I don't need to explain to you what you guys can already see. All right, we got one last guy over here, and there you go. He had a shield too. Oh, he took three shotgun shells at close range instead of just the one. <laughs> all right, we have got a refill. Uh, we've got some refill spots. Look at all over this place. This is not one of them though, so I don't know why I said that. I thought it was, but that was just a thing with canned food. And again, that's those are those buffs. So we've got those buffs that we could do. In fact, I could toss on one of these buffs. Uh, maybe when we fight the boss, I'll toss on one of those buffs. Word is that mm. they've really trashed the place. It would have broken my dad's heart to see it go to hell like this. We used to watch games there together. Get ourselves back up to two. Although I didn't have to do that. I could have used the pistol. I keep forgetting. I think it's better my folks didn't live to see any of this. But then I think about all the people doing their best to keep going. That's who we do this for, Agent. Go get him. I could have just used the pistol. I completely forgot about it, but that's okay. We'll have to pass by some contaminated areas. There used to be plenty of sick people being treated there before they got shot. So be careful. And now we got a, we got a bunch of guys down by the bar we got to take care of. Plain and simple. And the idea here is we've got to rescue this uh, person. And it is going to be a defense thing. That sort of bugginess has happened a few times, too. Sometimes you'll be at an interactable objective, and it won't... It won't actually interact with it. That's the person we're supposed to save. She's not doing a good job of getting behind cover, though. I Like, help me help you, miss. Please. Help me help you. Okay, I'd like to do, like, this. There we go. I don't. I, I, I'm 100 percent positive that you don't take friendly fire. She is bugged the f out. So clearly she's supposed to be like, oh, she's behind cover right now, but she isn't. The game thinks she's behind cover, and that's why they have her in that animation. But clearly, as we can all see, she's just kind of floating there. Beta bugs, yeah. That what we'll say. Something like that. Okay. Take cover, and maybe you kind of noticed there, but that that how that movement, my movement was really wonky. I assure you that's not exactly what I was looking to do, but when you're in tight quarters and you're trying to dodge, but it's also the same button as your cover, well, that's what happens, basically. All right, now we're going to let these guys push here. Get a little scope. Of re oh, okay. What the fuck? A larger open world. This can result in some crazy shenanigans. Like this. This is fucking. That's like what the. What are you doing? 
Oh, is she? Is someone on my friend? I heard someone screaming. There, there he is. Get down. Now, usually I end up using that melee as just a, a stun, especially on those harder enemies, because then that buys you some time to do a little bit of damage. It's actually, actually what you saw me use it for isn't what I typically use it for, that execute, because sometimes it's not even enough. Sometimes it's not even close to enough. All right, so we're going to be moving up now. This is going to be the final section of this stage quest. So this is a lot more involved, as you can tell, than those side missions that we do. Uh, this is much more involved because uh, we, we've got these various stages. We're in this huge complex area. They're going into all these different things. But these are... This is the only one of these that was in this beta. This was the only like significant quest. This is the only quest that you could redo on hard mode. Everything else is just side missions. And I would say that I, it, today, of the 14 hours that I played, I would say it only really took about... Oh, wait, am I going the wrong way? Where are we going here? There we go. Uh, it only really took about two to three hours to, to go through all of the story content. And I'm going through much quicker than I went through this morning because I've already i been through all this. I know all this. You notice we're getting a, about to the hour mark here. Um, it took me probably two hours to get to this point myself. I had done a bunch of side missions already. Um, but we skipped those for the sake of this video because I figured a couple side missions pretty much gives you the idea of what's going on. Uh, so this is actually really interesting. Notice how we're like, it's bright day right now. The first time I did this mission, it was snowing. Second time I did this mission on hard mode, it was uh, nighttime. So just further emphasizing that it, it really makes this world feel alive. Um, that, that sort of stuff really makes this world feel alive big time. The dynamic weather effects, the day-night cycle, just all of that. All of that. I think it makes a big difference. In, 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 in creating a world that people are uh, care and interested in uh, actually staying in and, and playing through. Alright, so this is the boss that we need to kill. It's Hutch. I loved him and all those crazy machinima antics that he had. But uh, truth is, we have to put an end to his life, plain and simple. <laughs> it's so funny to use a assault rifle like this at such large range. And when you when you come up against boss type characters, there's that little rocket next to his uh, his name. That, that will happen. So, like, when you're going through the dark zone, there'll be these at, there, these locations with enemy bosses that also have these dark zone chests. And you can get those chests. In those chests, you can get some really awesome gear. You can usually tell where those are as when you go into the dark zone by the location of these boss-type enemies. And, again, you can figure those out if they've got an icon next to their name. Sometimes it'll be a rocket launcher. Sometimes it'll be, like, a, a marksman scope for, like, a sniper-type boss. Sometimes it'll be a grenade or whatever for, I don't know, a guy who throws grenades. Grenadier. Gr grenader. Grenadine. <laughs> yeah, kill those guys. Hutch is pushing, although he tends to be slow to push. I've never actually seen him push right up on me. It's only his little sidekicks here that do that. But this is just a shooting gallery right now. And, you know, there's been a lot of talk about the bullet sponginess. And, I mean, as you've seen here, these guys aren't very bullet spongy. Now, it is the case that... These boss-type characters are. So this guy, Hutch, he's going to take a few rounds to take down. It's going to take a little bit. Let's go ahead and mark him here. Get the increased critical hit and all that. And we're just going to pop up, take some shots. Oh, shit. I almost just died. Okay, let's see if he gets hit by that, please. Awesome. Um, actually, did he? I don't even know. <laughs> I'm not even sure, to be honest with you. All right, so we're going to go a little closer to him. And, like, set, look at this. Like, look at this. is just... It can be a disaster sometimes, especially with moving enemies. And he dodged out of the way. Oh, he still got hit with it. Nice. So he's going to take some damage from that. And his backpack's exploding. He's got firecrackers on his backpack. Don't put firecrackers on your backpacks, boys and girls. Tons of gear. We also got some gear right over here. Beautiful. And we just unlocked the medical wing. We'll talk to so we can go back to base and uh, talk to Kendall and get the medical wing. Now, I could walk all the way back. We could take this path and go down these stairs and all that. But fast travel exists for certain locations. Base of operations. Also all the way back here. I could fast travel back to the hub. Let's just, for the sake of seeing it, fast travel here. 
Now, it's very unnecessary being this close, but, you know, the point of this video is to show you the division. So, in, in doing so, I'd like to show you the division. <laughs> so, there we go. We fast-traveled, and we're there. So, we didn't have to go all the way down those winding stairs. We didn't have to cross the couple of streets or whatever. And this is really cool. Once you start to build it up, uh, the percentage that you've completed each of the wings will show up here. I like this. I really, I do like overall what they've done with the heads-up display and the UI in this game. Like, at times, it can feel a little bit cluttered, but just in general, the aesthetic of it, I think, is really nice. I think it looks really nice. I don't know. Uh, we can ask a sit room. She's going to tell us about what's going on. It doesn't really matter. All right, let's do this here. Well, look who it is. Thanks for getting me out of the garden. I've been in some hostile work environments before, but Jesus. Of course, it's not like this place is going to win any prizes either. Antique equipment, zero staff, patients lining up out the door. This isn't going to cut it. We're doing the best we can, Dr. Candle. Any suggestions you might have, I'm happy to listen. I know, I know. Beggars, choosers, all that crap. What matters is beating this thing, but I can't do that without knowing more about it. And here's a good place to start. Sarah is pretty sure Dr. Gordon Amherst had something to do with the outbreak. God. That asshole. Saw him present a paper at Columbia once. He nearly started a riot. He's part of this. I need to talk to him. Anything of his you can find. Notebooks, laptops, close personal friends, I need that too. And we need to talk about live samples and antibodies. You're gonna be busy. And you'll be? Fixing this. Saving lives. Now if you'll excuse me, I'll get started. All right, so more cutscenes, more story stuff. Some bad guy might have started it, whatever. This is what's important. We can now unlock further progression in the medical wing. So we come up here, we rescued the person who was necessary. This lets us unlock the clinic. So each wing has 10 upgrades. It's going through here, medical wing, various upgrades, medical missions to do it. Shows your wing progress. Unlocks skills, mods, or talents, as we talked about before. There's also perks that exist. Now, the talents and perks we don't see in the beta, so we don't really know anything about it. We can unlock the first thing, which is the clinic. In doing so... The upgrades look great. The upgrades look great. Fantastic. In doing so, basically finish the beta. Uh, that's, that's it for the main story. Now, there's still a bunch of side missions that I didn't go through here with you in this video. Uh, a fairly significant amount, to be uh, honest with you. Probably another hours or so worth... And then it's in the dark zone. But the big thing that we did in unlocking that is, as we mentioned, you level that up and you get new stuff. So we ended up unlocking a second skill slot and also the first aid ability. So we're going to get first aid. We're going to put it here. And I don't know if we can buy any more of these. Yeah, we could, we could like, get the sticky bomb. The pulse is really good, though. So I'm going to stick with the pulse. You know what? Let's replace the sticky bomb with the pulse. Uh, yeah, let's, let's replace the pulse with the sticky bomb. That sounds good. We've also picked up some stuff in our inventory. Let's see what we have here. Any significant jumps in DPS? The submachine gun here is uh, quite a bit more DPS than... Oh, no, it's not, actually. That's 2,000. Okay, never mind. Uh, any of these? Any big jumps? No, actually. I wonder, though, if modded, if this would be better than that so let me try modding this and we can see what the damage would be with it the, the damage that we had with that other one was some 2000 or so i'd be interested to see what this would be i still don't think it's as good no it's not even close okay whatever so we're, we're gonna keep our m14 this is clearly this is clearly our weapon of choice here so we'll put this on this one, yes. And this one, yes. Take it off that gun. Okay. Uh, I, I suppose I don't really need to do too much. I mean, you guys understand. We've got different gear. We, we pick the gear we want to use. <laughs> uh, you get different gear. You pick the gear you want to use. You you replace them. You upgrade them. You modify them. It's I mean, it's pretty straightforward. There's nothing to, like... You're not scratching your brain too hard about any of this, uh, really. A bunch of our armor on this, and the stats are equal, so we should definitely take that one. And for these... LMG damage. 14 arms. 14 arms. Shotgun damage. 
we're actually using the shotgun, so we can dump that. Okay, so there you go. Now we've got a secondary skill, which is a heal. Uh, we have got... We're starting to progress these wings. All we could do in the beta was that medical wing. Besides a couple of extra side missions, the only thing that you guys haven't seen yet is the Dark Zone. So we're going to wrap things up, taking a look at the Dark Zone. Uh, this has been a very long and drawn out video. I would like to just tell you sort of how I feel about this game. Because we've, sh we've seen a lot. We've talked a lot about the game. I, I want to say that I'm a little bit concerned with the size of the map. I mean, look at what we've explored just in this video. We've explored this area. We're walking into the dark zone. This is the rest of the game. When the game launches, this is it. This map right here. I'm a little concerned about the size. Yes, there's some verticality. Yes, there's some subterranean levels. We didn't get a chance to show you this in the video. Trust me, it's not that significant. Every subterranean level that I've been into has basically equated to a couple of hallways. Like, it's been very, very straightforward. And I'm not talking about the... <laughs> like philosophical hallways like I, I talked about how the things like this is I mean like a literally a couple of hallways and there haven't even been enemies in there now that could be a beta thing maybe there's enemies in there at launch maybe it's a faction we haven't heard of there's a really good chance but right now in the beta and all I can do is go off of what I've seen what's been present what's presented to us right now I'm a little bit worried about the content. Or, not the content as much as the... Yeah, sort of the content. Like, the physical landmass that we're going to have to explore. I'm a little bit worried that after a week, I'm going to be like, I know everything. And th th for lots of games, that wouldn't be a big deal. But for me, this is a game that I wanted to play for more, much, much more than a week. And so I'm hoping that there's something in here, be it the PvP or the progression... Or some endgame stuff that they haven't told us about. I'm really hoping there's something else that really keeps me in to this game. Um, this is an encounter. I don't want to do this. This is just another encounter. I don't care. I do not care. I want to go this way. I'm getting. I'm running away from the encounter. I'm not trying to show you guys this encounter. I'm trying to show you... Am I going in the right direction? Okay. I'm not trying to show you guys an encounter. I'm trying to wrap up and show you guys the Dark Zone. So so that's my thought on that. Um, I've talked about how I feel like the, the uh, movement at times can feel a little sluggish. Uh, but overall, I've gotten more comfortable with it. Um, it's, it's not as bad as I first felt it was after getting some experience with it. Maybe the reason I felt it was so sluggish is because I haven't played third-person shooter in a long while. But... My character movement doesn't feel as fluid as, as sometimes I would like it to feel. Uh, and I'm also a little bit wary about the shooting on the controller. As you've seen, I, I, I'm decently efficient at it. Uh, but I'm, I'm really interested to see how it plays on the keyboard and mouse. Now, with all of that said, I had a really good time today. Like, I liked playing the game. I, and a lot of it, I'm not going to lie, for me, having a progression system goes a long way for me. I love progression systems. I love acquiring better gear and that making my character better. That's going to be a big part of this game. And from what I can tell right now, doing this Dark Zone, doing the PvP is going to be another big part of the game. Now, there's re it's not it's all the PvE stuff that you saw. We kill enemies, we get loot. The difference being other players are here as well. And other players at any point can turn and kill you. At any point, they can say, I want to attack you. This guy right here, he could turn and kill me. Or I could turn and kill him. Now, why would you do that? Well, because if a player is carrying loot, you can take that loot. You can come to one of these uh, helicopter zones. And you can call in an extraction. There's an extraction that was just called in. So I'm guessing this person has loot. So he is going to take that loot... And he is going to extract it on the helicopter. And and that's it. The loot is his. He extracts it on the helicopter. He gets the loot. That's how it works. Unless someone kills him. And takes that loot. Unless someone kills any one of these people. And takes their loot. 
when that happens, whoever wins keeps the loot. The winner of the killing... Now, I'm, I don't... It's not happening yet. I haven't gone to kill any NPCs. But let's pretend I've gone and killed NPCs. I've got a little yellow knapsack on my back, beneath my backpack. Much like these players have here. Helicopter comes down. And then it's time to turn it all in. So then we're in this moment of what is going to happen. Cargo extraction, cargo extraction is here. Let's turn in our cargo, everybody. I've got cargo too. We all have cargo. Let's turn in our cargo. Or we could go rogue and attack everybody. We could try to kill all of the, oh, I'm, I'm reloading. I'm reloading. I killed one of the people. I downed him at least. And that's what can happen in the PVP. You can go rogue, try to kill people soon. Now normally you wouldn't do that with four people around you who aren't rogue because then they all turn on you and kill you. But for the sake of this video, I think that's absolutely perfect. That is going to do it for this video here today, guys. In the future, I'm going to go in depth and show you a lot of footage of the Dark Zone. The Dark Zone is the most fun that I had in this game, but it doesn't really... I wanted to do this video to introduce you to what the game is, the basics, all of the fundamentals, before we took a look at the PvP and talked about all of that stuff. That will be coming in a future video. For today, though... After 14 hours, I'm having a good time. I do still plan to play this game at release. Absolutely. I want to get in. I want to see what the end game is like. I want to see if it can keep me past that one week, which I think is all it will take for me to explore the entire game. Until the DLC comes out, of course. All right, guys. That is going to do it for me here today. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, this has been Force. Checking out The Division. I hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time, I'll see you later.